Welcome back guys to Watch It Print. Uh, so this is an update to the hot end assembly upgrade that I'm designing for the Ender 3 printer. So, so far, as you can see, I've got a prototype here and I'll explain what's going on there. But I didn't start with that. I actually started with just a clip design here. This was the first thing I did. And all I wanted to do was prove out that this system here would actually work and snap onto the radiator of the hot end. And it does, and it works It works all right. However, many iterations of this uh, just work to make that, you know, that fitting right there a little bit better. So as we move into the very first prototype, this one here, you can see that it, I've got places for a fan there and right there, just like we see in the final design right here, where this fan is pulling across the radiator and exhausting up, and this fan is blowing down uh, to do the part cooling. So this was the first prototype. It didn't fit, unfortunately, because I forgot that there's a couple of screws that actually hold that radiator in place. So it didn't clear those screws, and so this was I was unable to test this. But you can see I was able to test how the air was actually flowing out of this vent right down here and it pretty much just blew straight out so that wasn't all that great. Uh, I made some modifications to the second prototype here um, and changed the way that the vent was coming out. This had a slight effect but not much and it also did not, it did fit, it did fit over the radiator and it actually, this is the same design that's actually on here now. However, I redesigned this bottom part again for the third prototype and this right here is pretty close to what we have except for it's got a couple extra sides on the side and yes, extra sides on the side. You, you, you see what it, it does. Now it focuses its air pretty much right here uh, which is great because that's exactly right where the nozzle is on the 3D printer itself. So that worked out pretty good, except for I, unfortunately, somehow forgot <laughs> those screws again in this design here, which, so I had to redesign this one more time. So I did that and got to the current prototype that's on the machine. So if we take a closer look, which is completely blown out. Okay, so you can see how this unit here, it just, all it does is clip onto the radiator itself. Now, I still got to work on the fit a little bit better in order to make that clip work and work well because of these, you know, those annoying little screws right there. Um, but for the most part, the intention is that this clips right onto this unit and it's held in place. And, you know, right now it does work. I got a little bit extra work to do there, but there you go. Now it's in place. Uh, I also increased the gap here because I had this, you know, this fan to the point where you could just like uh, slide it in there and it was a zero clearance fit. But the fan, it actually protrudes just a little bit. So there's about a half millimeter gap between this surface here and where this fan front plate is. So it's not too much, not like it's pulling in a bunch of air there, but that actually works pretty well. And the highest exhaust temperatures I've been able to monitor with a uh, thermistor is right around 40 degrees Celsius, which is very, very low. And I've done plenty of retraction tests and whatnot, like printing a part like this, which has lots and lots of retractions. Didn't have any problem with that. Um, also ran a couple of experiments for bridging. So you can see this right here, the longest span is 160 millimeters. And then I compared that to the stock one. <laughs> and uh, it performed the exact same as the stock unit. I also did some PETG on this unit, which is why we see this thing, you know, warped. Because this was printed in PLA, just as a prototype. And with the bed being at around 90 degrees Celsius, uh, the PLA simply does not stand up to that much temperature. Not to mention that, and you got the, the actual heater block right there, you know, pumping out a lot of heat as well. PLA simply won't stand up to the temperature and you can even see in like some of the time lapses here all that 
melts and, 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 and warps. It doesn't like melt into a puddle, it just kind of moves. So even though these side pieces here kind of melted and warped around a little bit, it actually still printed benchies <laughs> that are absolutely identical. And you know what? That actually makes quite a lot of sense because the fan that is you know running here is, is very much equivalent to the stock unit just about the same fan. This one's just slightly bigger. And they're both blowing across the nozzle and both of these results are flawless. Uh, more cooling wouldn't make these any better. As you can see, the front of the benchy there is just perfect and it's just perfect there. The only problem I think I had with this benchy is, you know, a little bit of over extrusion on the very first layer. But besides that, I mean, they both came out absolutely excellent. So based on these results here, the unit does part cooling equivalent to the stock unit, and the stock unit works great for the filaments that actually need part cooling, such as PETG and PLA, and, you know, results like this off the stock unit, I'm not sure how we can actually improve on that. I think we'd have to go to larger layer heights. All of this was done at 0.15 millimeters. Um, and we'd probably have to bump up the nozzle size before we get to any place that might, where extra cooling might be beneficial. Or maybe we'll see some things differently if I put this in an enclosure. But for right now, just matching the stock unit on part cooling seems to be a real win because it does an excellent job. However, one nice benefit here is this fan here actually sends a lot of vibrations through this frame. And the same fan here is used right down here inside of this unit. And this, this fan's already going bad on me. It, it's just about to fail. And if it fails, it, I don't know if my electricals or whatever are going to burn up, but I'm, I'm quite worried with that already because it's only been about 100 hours of print time on this unit, or maybe a little bit more, and that thing is pretty much toast. So it's nice to replace something that's you know out of balance and just makes a lot of noise with a little bit higher quality unit, which is these fans right there. They're not silent. They still make a, you know, a blowing noise, but they're a different. Uh, they don't. They don't make the vibrations. Hang on, this guy's running over here. Keeps me cool. All right. I'll just unplug that. Okay. So you can hear how loud that fan is. It's. I mean, it's not silent, but it's completely different. All right. There we go. Now you can hear that hum. This thing just had to warm up a little bit. And depending on what your surface is, that hum actually will reverberate quite a bit. You know, because you can actually feel the vibrations in the frame. I mean, that all transmits to the table. Obviously, if you have some squishy feet or something like that, you can really get rid of a lot of that noise. Decibel-wise, the two fans are actually quite close to each other. It's just a, a different type of noise. Um, Weight-wise, this is about 75 grams, just that shroud unit, and this unit here is 31 grams, so a big reduction in weight. And this is also the shrunken piece uh, for the back plate with the hot end relocated to the center, and that weighs a woo, whopping 9 grams. So. That's got to be a, a, quite a bit lighter than this, than this back plate here. Okay, so so far the prototype here is actually lighter, so that's an improvement. The fan doesn't vibrate, and it's also kind of quite a bit smaller, so we've made improvements in that regard. I got to work on the fitting a little bit here, and I got to work on the materials, and I think this bottom part is going to be like bolt on or magnet on. We've got to make a great thing for people to remix down here. I don't think people want to mess too much with stuff up here because it's kind of a little bit more crazy on the CAD side, but down here 
you know, if you're a fan of like the Fang style, you could just adapt this blower right where it's located to some sort of crazy Fang thing or whatever and just have a lot of fun with that. So that pretty much sums up where I'm at with the prototype stage here. I've, I've done a good amount of design. Obviously, I've came up with this concept so far. And right now, I've proven that it works. So this unit here has actually been running for a good 100 hours now. Matter of fact, I have so many different things that I need to print or people have asked me to print. This, this uh, Ender 3 printer has not, hasn't really stopped for more than a day. So... I've probably logged about an extra 100 hours on here. And I also put a, a Raspberry Pi with Octoprint on there. And I got some other plans of how I'm going to package that together. And also how I'm going to turn the hot end fan on and off. There's been some comments you guys were leaving me down there below that were nice and useful. Saying that the two fans run off the same sort of pin. So I'll probably have to use a... I've used a separate board in the past. And that's actually worked out pretty good. So I have a few more tweaks to make to this model. And then I'll probably release it on probably Thingiverse and some other formats for Patreon. And then we'll also get into testing some more higher temperature materials. I have done polycarbonate on both nozzles. The off-gassing on the stock unit was, it was rough. But we'll see what the new liner that I have for this hot end actually, like, does for it. So that is actually something that goes right inside of here. There's a lot of details to this whole process and the whole thing keeps evolving. So <laughs> I'm gonna have to make multiple videos. Otherwise, this thing's gonna end up like a half hour long and just be packed full of too much detail. So, so there you have it, guys. I think this prototype has actually worked out pretty good thus far. I'm quite pleased with it. And I like that it's a, much lighter than the previous version, especially once I add in this back plate here. That did make a difference in ghosting. A couple more design iterations and a lot more testing. And I think I'll have it. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed this little episode here. And if I've earned your subscription, then thank you so much for that. Have a great day, guys. Stay awesome. Peace. Brothgar. Or, nope. Nope. Different channel. Still me, though. Out. <laughs>